Hey fellow woodworkers, welcome back to another video. Today's an exciting day because this video marks the first episode in a new series mathematics slash physics for woodworkers. The only show on the internet where you can learn something about mathematics and physics which corresponds to your life as a woodworker and you are probably going to get a kick out of it because this is going to help you learn something new about the things you have applied maybe up until this day but you didn't know where the foundations come from or how to calculate certain things overall. And in this series we are going to cover everything starting from lengths over to what density is and what this has to do with the Chenka hardness scale. What even is a force? How can you approximate circles when trying to create circular table tops for example? All of this will be covered in this playlist and you can find the whole playlist down there in the description. So definitely make sure to check it out and I'm going to fill it up over time with a lot of theory and a lot of things you can apply to your daily woodworking life. And to start the series off, we are going to begin by talking about the theory on the most important set of units slash metric you're going to use as a woodworker. Guess already? Well, obviously I'm talking about measuring and converting lengths. There is no building cabinets without taking some kind of measurements with some kind of ruler and the like. There is no talking to American people if you don't know how to convert from the metric system to the imperial system. It's just not possible and this is exactly what we're going to cover. But before we get started, a bit of definition, theory, history. So could you, if I ask you, define what it means to have some kind of length? What does it mean to have one meter? Well, that's really a hard question to answer if you don't know about the theory or have never done the physics before. What is the length exactly? Well, the length is the distance you need from a certain point A to another point B. For example, I can measure this length that I got right here. For example, those are 50 centimeters. I don't care what it is right now exactly, 50 units something. You could say this right here is one unit length apart and then I can take another unit length. You can define it like this. But there have been people before us who tried to define lengths a bit more meaningfully. And to each and every physical thing you could probably measure, there does exist some kind of base unit, which it has been defined by other people, as mentioned before. For example, if we take a look at the length, well, what is the base unit for the length? Well, you probably guessed it. It's one meter. This right here is a base unit for the so-called distance between two points A and B. A meter, okay. But what if you are from America, for example? Wouldn't it be an inch? No, still not. We in the physical community agreed on using the meter as the standard unit. And each and every physical thing you can measure is being denoted by some kind of symbol. For the meter, we are going to use the symbol small m. Now just a little fun fact, originally the meter, so the distance I have shown you before from A to B, um, has been defined as one ten millionth of the distance from the equator to the North Pole, which is pretty hard to remember and if I just tell you that this is what one meter is, you probably can't imagine what it means to have one meter lying in your hands. I mean, I couldn't do that too. This is why someone later got the good idea to just define a certain distance to be, well, one meter in size. And he just took a metal bar and said, this right here is one meter now. And this is how most things have been defined in physics at the start. Just take the Celsius or Fahrenheit um, temperature scales. Someone just said, this is 100 degrees Celsius, for example, boiling point of water. And this right here is something different. For example, when water starts to freeze and now this is the Celsius scale. And yeah, this is how physics works most of the time. You just take something arbitrary and later you're going to try to improve on it. And certainly we definitely have made some improvements on the definition of a meter in the last few years. And this is what the physical community agrees on at the moment, that the one meter is just being defined as the distance that light travels in just round about one uh, 300 millionth of a second. Pretty easy to remember, right? But it is what it is. I mean, the distance that light travels in a certain time, okay, in a vacuum is just a constant thing. So it does make sense to define the meter like this. Now we are done with a bit of history and definition on the meter. And now we are going to talk about the most important skills that a woodworker must have. And for this, we are going to go over to my blackboard and I'm going to explain a tiny little bit more. Follow me. Now, what other units are there worth talking about in the metric system when it comes to lengths? I mean, next to the meter and the centimeters, which are by far the most important units you need to know about, there do also exist the so-called decimeters. You maybe know the term or the terminology from the decimal system. It means one tenth. So one meter 
are 10 decimeters. Or in other words, one decimeter is one tenth of a meter. Putting this into mathematical terms means that one meter is equal to 10 decimeters. Okay, giving a little example, okay, numerically. If we have 0.6 meters, that means that we have six out of 10 of a meter. But they do fit 10 decimeters into one meter, but we only have six decimeters that we need at this point. So 0.6 meters are six decimeters. I can give you a nice diagram, which is going to give you a great overview of all the conversion that you need to take. And we are going to start off with the conversion from meter to decimeter here. If you want to convert from meter to decimeter, what you need to know is in one meter, there do exist 10 decimeters. So if you want to convert from meter to decimeter, you're going to multiply the whole thing by 10. I hope you can see this here. Going from 0.6 meters to the decimeters is by multiplying by 10, bringing the decimal point one spot to the right, giving you six decimeters. Or if you want to go the other way around, a conversion from decimeters to meters, what you're going to do is you're going to divide the whole thing by 10. If you use your calculator, for example, 6 divided by 10 is going to give you 0.6. It's going to be sped out by your calculator overall. This right here is the first conversion and it's always going to work like this. Now we are going to go one step further and we are going to take a look at the next lower unit from decimeters, the so-called centimeters. Just like before, that do fit 10 centimeters into one decimeter. One decimeter is equal to 10 centimeters. This makes sense if you think about what cent means. Cent is one hundredth of the base unit, meaning one hundred centimeters fit into one meter. Okay, I hope this does make sense. One meter is 10 decimeters, but 10 decimeters are the same as one hundred centimeters. And this is how you can word, uh, con convert between the two. Giving you another example. If you want to convert, for example, from 0.69 meters, let's go like this. You know that those are just 69 centimeters. This is what you know. We have 100 centimeters in one meter, meaning 0.69 meters are the same as um, 69 centimeters. Or to put it in other words, a conversion from centimeters to decimeters, we have definitely 60 centimeters in here and 10 centimeters are in one decimeter. So we definitely have six decimeters, but we still have a remainder, namely 0.9, so 6.9 decimeters. And this is how you can convert from decimeters to centimeters or the other way around. Once again, by dividing or multiplying by 10, or you can go the other route and go from centimeters to meters directly by using a factor of a hundred. So to complete our diagram that we got right here, to convert from decimeters to centimeters, what you're going to do is you're going to multiply once again by 10. Okay, next lower unit, multiplying by 10. If you want to go from centimeters to decimeters, next bigger unit, divide the whole thing by 10. Or you can go a bit further and say, I want to convert from meters to centimeters. To do this, I'm going to multiply by 100. 10 times 10 is 100. Or going from centimeters to meters, I'm going to divide the whole thing by 100. I think you can already understand where I'm going at here. Now we are going to take a look at the next lower unit from centimeters. Those are the so-called millimeters. Millimeters, just like before, um, does imply that we have a conversion of 10. Mill means a thousandth of a base unit, meaning in one centimeter there are 10 millimeters. Or in other words, if we go this conversion, if we have 10 centimeters, we are going to have 100 millimeters, which are one decimeter. Or if we have 10 decimeters, this is going to mean that we have 1000 millimeters, which are one meter overall. So taking a look, for example, at our, um, let's say, um, 0.12 meters, we are going to get on the one hand that those are 12 centimeters. Or we know that this is 1.2 decimeters. Or going into the next lower unit, we know that those are 120 millimeters. And millimeters are a unit you are going to use a lot of times, especially when taking a look at the thickness of a piece of wood. Millimeters are very important, so do not forget about these. So once again, here are the conversion factors. If you want to go from centimeters to millimeters, once again, multiplying the whole thing by 10. 
this is not witchcraft at all. Or if you want to go from millimeters to centimeters, you are just going to, uh, you are going to multiply by 10, I'm terribly sorry. But going from millimeters to centimeters, you are going to divide the whole thing by 10. If you want, on the other hand, go from millimeters to decimeters, I don't have space anymore here right now, I'm terribly sorry. What you need to do is you have to divide the whole thing by 100 or going from decimeters to millimeters, you are going to multiply the whole thing by 100. Or if you want to go from meters to millimeters, you, you probably guessed it, are going to multiply by a thousand. Or want to go from millimeters to meters, you are going to divide the whole thing by a thousand. The only thing missing in this diagram right now is the conversion from millimeters to decimeters. But I think you can already see where I'm going at here. It's pretty easy. Those are just factors of 10. But it becomes a bit more sophisticated when talking about the imperial system, which, are going, which we are going to do next. Now going from imperial to metric or the other way around is a bit more complicated. Now the base unit you are basically going to use in the imperial system are the so-called inch. Inch in German means Zoll, <laughs> just as a little matter of fact. And the inch has been defined by the following conversion to centimeters. Namely, one inch has been defined as 2.54 centimeters. And this is all that you need to know. Once you know this conversion and the conversion diagram, you are so good to go to convert between every kind of inch measurement or later foot measurement and all the other metric measurements that we just talked about. Taking a look at the conversion diagram, once again, if you want to convert from one inch to centimeters, what you have to do is, since inch is a bigger unit you could say, we are going to multiply by 2.54, or if you want to go the other way around, from centimeters to inch, you are going to divide the whole thing by 2.54. Now, just to give you a concrete example, what about three inches in meters? We want to find out what three inches are in meters. Three inches. Okay. If you want to get three inches, what you need to do for the conversion to centimeters, you are going to multiply the whole thing by 2.54. Three times two is six. Three times 0.5 is 1.5. So definitely 7.5. But then we are going to multiply our 0.04 also by 3, giving you 0.12, meaning you are going to get 7.62 centimeters as being 3 inches. And now at this point we already know what the conversion from centimeters to meters is. Remember the diagram, here it is once again. To convert from centimeters to meters, what you need to do is you need to divide the whole thing by 100, meaning our decimal place is going to go two places to the left. Meaning overall, dividing through by 100, you can also use a calculator if you are not too good at mental calculation, you are going to get that three inches are the same as 0.0762 meters. And this is how it works. You can also turn it into decimeters, for example, by dividing what we got right here by 10 or turning this into millimeters, you are going to multiply the whole thing by 10. Now next to the inches, the most important one you are going to use um, in the imperial system are the so-called feet. And the feet or foot are defined by inches. Namely, if we take a look at one inch or one foot in our case, if you want to go from one foot to inch, what you're going to do is you're going to multiply it by 10, uh, 12. 12 inch fit into one foot. Now this is the conversion that we got right here. And just like before with the conversion diagram, what you are going to do is you're going to compare the foot or feet to your one inch. And to go from foot to inch, you are going to multiply the whole thing by 12. And to go from inch to foot, you are going to divide the whole thing by 12. And we can now go from this measurement of one foot to what exactly a feet or one foot is in centimeters. It's very easy because all you need to do is you need to multiply your inches by 12 because we know that 12 inch are the same as one foot. Okay, as a mathematical equation, one foot is equal to 12 inch. But we know how to convert from inch 
to centimeters by multiplying everything by 2.54. And if you go through the calculations, you are going to land at 30.48 centimeters. And you can also convert this into the other metric uh, units that we talked about before. Those would be the same as 0.3048 meters or 3. Dot, um, 048 um, decimeters for example and so on or 304.8 millimeters it really doesn't end there once you know how to convert between the metric system and once you know what one inch is in centimeters then you're basically good to go to convert between each and every unit that I'm going to give you there are also other length units like kilometers or hectometers and the like but those really don't matter for our purposes because we are woodworkers and we are in the realm of meters centimeters and millimeters and those conclude um, all the most important metric and imperial units I wanted to talk about today and I hope you learned something new or maybe you re refreshed on something that you already once learned before but you didn't know um, about a few details anymore but if you did enjoy what you have seen today, then definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel. More mathematics for woodworkers is going to come in the next time and I need to get used to this format. Um, so if, if something wasn't to your liking, please make sure to tell me down there in the comments. But other than that, don't forget to also check out stemage.eu for handcrafted products that you can purchase for yourself, like these spicy cutting boards from maple and mahogany. Those look really good. And yeah, other than that, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more DIY projects and the like. And until next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. Ciao!